historic Wimber Stadium here as we have a 3-0 Black Lake Valley Vikings versus the Wimber Ramblers also at 3-0. I'm joined here with my host Jim Hammett and Jim, the great atmosphere here tonight at beautiful Wimber Stadium. Yeah, we're looking to go 4-4 uh, for four on our games here. We've uh, picked the best game of the week the past three weeks and uh, yeah, this one's shaping up to be such a great game. Uh, you have Black Lake Valley coming in here with Johnny Sheasley, the running back, and of course Wimber uh, with the attack trying to replace uh, the wonderful Colin Ryan. So, you know, it's going to be a great game, great atmosphere on hand here at Wimber Stadium. Yeah, you know, it, it really is going to be, uh, obviously, Wimber with that single wing. That's going to be something interesting to watch tonight. So We'll have Blackwood Valley kicking the ball off for you here tonight. Back deep for Wimber, we have number two, Devin Tomlinson, number 15, Matt Barkley. Yes, same name as the USC uh, Heisman front runner quarterback. <laughs> Jim, I thought I was going to get the same. <laughs> Looks like we're all set here for football here at Wimber Stadium. Blackwood Valley kicking the ball off. His name will be called a lot today with the, with the receiver and the tackle. He's one of the leading tacklers on the squad this year. Yeah, definitely uh, the main passing threat, receiving threat for Wimber. So you're going to see him a lot. You're going to see how they line him up. A lot of different spots. Fans, here's your first look here at the single wing. Ball at the 36 yard line. About a gain of four, bring up a second down and six for Wimber. Ball at the 39 yard line, gain of three, second down and seven. Folks who are used to those off tackle runs, there's going to be a lot here today. Blacklick starting out on the five man front. Wimber sticking with that same formation. Bunch to the bottom half of the screen, same play, and on this again. Again. Maybe a gain. 27 Gray Regal. And again, we were on the tackle. Again, about a yard and the third and six for the Wimber quarter. I'll bring up a third down for Wimber and we'll get our first look at perhaps maybe the Wimber passing game of uh, number 12. That's Dakota Guyton, the quarterback. Uh, he's been throwing it very well. Wimber not always known as a passing team, so we're going to see what he comes up with here on a third down and six situation. Inside counter. You saw Devin Tomlinson on the first two carries, that's Dan Tomlinson. That's 10.37 on the clock here in the first quarter. Remember on their opening drive, picking up the first down. That's what the single win will give you. That'll give you that versatility in the backfield. Not so much uh, as, a, as a downfield threat, but you're definitely going to get your balls. Uh, you're going to get the balls to a bunch of different ball players. Yeah, it looks like Weber's going to want to control the clock.
first down again. We see uh, Black and Belly safety five yards from the line of scrimmage. You don't normally see that. Watch if uh, all his coaches can uh, take advantage of that. We have to wonder if Black and Belly is going to find a way to stop this. Uh, Wimber going in this direction, both sides. Uh, you know, it's tough, uh, tough offense to come back. Black was going to have to come up with something. Blackwood with Regal there, number 27, was looking in the backfield. Obviously after this, about eight straight runs. It's not just the play action, the pack that, that is so key with passing. It's, you never know who the ball's actually going to be snapped to. So, you know, that, that just adds another dimension to the passing game. But, you know, anybody can get the ball and throw it. Yeah, it's definitely an offensive pass that I've always used. Uh, we've seen Westmont this year. They're starting to bring it out a little bit. So, you know, it's... it's thing in football, uh, there's always trends. Uh, you know, it's a lot of spread nowadays, but some teams are still trying to get back to, you know, running the old-time offenses. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a reverse inside to number eight, Tomlinson, and he finds some room to run, and that will be good for a first down for Wimber. And Jim, you know, you, you brought that up about, you know, like the new spread offenses and, so, and things like that, but Chance, if you could recall, you know, uh, you know, coaches like Urban Meyer who have brought sort of that triple option into the spread attack and really sort of blended the old with the new. Same with Rich Rodriguez also. Absolutely, uh, kind of blending principles. That's a thing a lot of basketball coaches do. Uh, you know, just take a little bit from each and uh, make it work. And uh, Wimber does a nice job of doing what they do. Let's see if they uh, go back to the passing game or stick with what's working, the running game. I think we got a block in the back. No flag. No flag, that was number 22 for Blacklick. Trevor Neri on the run there for Wimber. Maddie Worthington looks like he got clipped inside, but no call on the play. That will be a second down and one, and we have 7.28 remaining in the first quarter. No score, Wimber on their opening drive. Well, this is a great sustained drive here for the Ramblers. Actually, they're going to change it to a first down. First down for Wimber at the Viking 20. Interesting, uh, you know, it's marked short and they didn't even call for a measurement. Uh, ref could obviously see it was a first down. Man in motion, that's Tomlinson. Guy with the direct quarterback keeper. Maybe two or three on that carry. Dakota Guy. Stutzman on the tackle. They'll bring up a second down and seven, seven minutes on the clock in the first quarter, no score. Let's see how uh, this, this single wing attack uh, adjusts to being in the red zone here. Staunch Blacklick Valley defense on the season. Huh? Another misdirection carry. Another fumble on the... And that's just what Blacklick Valley needed. Wimber was having such a great drive. 22, Maddie Worthington again. And it didn't look like Blacklick Valley was stopping Wimber anytime soon. They needed a big play, and they got one. And now we'll get our first look at the I'll do it all Johnny Sheasley for the Blacklick Valley Vikings. Well, Jim, we saw it last week, and we're seeing it today already. The turnovers in the first quarter, especially in the red zone. It must be the games we picked. There was about six turnovers in that Clearfield Central game we went to last week. <laughs> in the first quarter. Hey, Ralph. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. They know. They know down there. They know. This is going to give you an idea of the difference of what we want to wear. Sheasley in that quarterback. Hands it off. It's another, number 27 again, Grant Regal. Picks up three, second down, seven.
Well, Sheasley is listed as a quarterback, but uh, obviously leads the team in rushing, and uh, Blake Ray has been leading the team in passing, so we're expecting to see uh, Sheasley in a bunch of different roles tonight. Uh, as we saw last week with Austin Cunningham at Central, who even lined up at receiver, so I think Sheasley's that type of player as well. Just the build of him, he looks a lot like Austin Cunningham, and he's real athletic. He's ball right here on a sweep around the side, and he's breaking it. And right on cue, Johnny Sheasley with a huge run out the midfield. That was a great looking run. He was able to get around the corner, and fend some defenders off with that left forearm. Five yards. Well, Jim, there we saw the first dose of Sheasley on the night. We see, we, he can, we see what he can do right away. Yeah, you know, definitely living up to the hype on one play, and uh, you know I'm expecting to have a big game for him. Uh, Wimber's going to need to find a way to key on him and uh, try to limit, because you know he's going to get big plays like that. Just limit the big plays as best you can. Fumble on the chair, or on the snap rather. Blackwood Valley uh, recovers. Looks like they were going back to Sheasley around the corner again. They pulled the left guard. And it looked like they had that sealed, but obviously the fumble. And ball is at the 48-yard line of Blacklick Valley. We have five minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. Wimber fumbled on their opening possession, and now Blacklick Valley is coming to uh, running about their fourth play on offense so far. We've seen Johnny Sheasley in this same formation in a double reverse. He gets up over midfield for about a gain of four. Worthington carrying the football. That is Maddie Worthington, a 5'9 senior, number 22. Picks up about four yards. It's third and six on the winner 48 yards. Mm -hmm. They'll bring up a big third down for Blackwood Valley early in this game. They obviously want to keep this drive going and seeing what Wimber can do on offense. Blackwood Valley wants to keep the ball in their hands, obviously. Sheasley, another on that sweep to the outside, trying to find some room. A good play by the Wimber defense. Yeah, Wimber, Wimber really stepped up there. Their safety Sheasley came up really, really nice there on the outside. Looked like Jake Polka was in there making the, making the stop, the senior. So it's good pursuit on, you know, a tough running back like Cheesley on the outside. You know, you just got to key on on him and, uh, you know, don't go for the fakes and just go right at him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Cheesley is the do everything back. He is punting for Blakeman. Shaisley putting down to Tomlinson and Barkley. 16. Calls for the fair catch. And it's caught at about the 23 yard line. Devin Tomlinson fair catching. 24 the rather. At the Wimber 24 yard line for his first and 10. All right, Jim, so you know, we, we, we got to see a, a drive by each squad. Um, you know, Wimber obviously with more first downs there, but you know, one of the things that you're going to see obviously is misdirections, but what I've been keying on here is just watching the, the, the secondary coming up for each team, uh, both really aggressive. So watch for some play actions here throughout the first quarter. Absolutely. Yeah, both teams kind of have a similar game plan, uh, but uh, eventually you're going to have to try to break a play here, and uh, Wimber's going to go back and pass. Looking for a long ball. Going deep. And the ball was pulled in we by number 50. <laughs> On a completed pass and a great catch by Matt Barkley. Matt Barkley on the catch and that gets it down to the 39 yard line of Blackwood Valley. 37 yard pass and completion to the Blackwood 39 yard line. It was a 37 yard play on that one. It looks like there was a little pass interference offensively, but wasn't enough to be called. Weber will go back to their base offensive set here. Direct handoff. And he has stopped for no game. Devin Tomlinson. That's Devin Tomlinson, one of the two Tomlinsons you'll hear, number two and number eight. Both are juniors, and uh, they both touch the ball in a variety of different ways. Wimber likes to get them the ball. But, uh, you know, good play there for Blacklick, finally getting a play in the backfield. And, uh, again, we have uh, no score. Wimber with their second drive, under three minutes in the first quarter clock. Wimber with the ball at the 39 of Blacklight here. And again, staying with their base offensive set right here, the wing, man in motion. It's a give to number eight, Tomlinson, and he breaks free. And he 
he's inside the 10 yard line. We call him about the eight or nine. Wimber on that play with the reverse quarterback who was, leading, uh, was the leading blocker there through the hole, able to seal the, uh, the, the left side of the, of the defense. I'm sorry, the right side of the defense for Black Lake Valley. Twenty-nine yard game for Dan Here we go, Jim. Second red zone appearance here by Wimber. First and, goal first and ten at the ten, so it's a first and goal. Let's see what Wimber can come up with here. Uh, they fumbled last time they're in the red zone. They're going to do a sweep out to Tomlinson. He gains a yard on that play. Pitch out to Devin Tomlinson. That's Devin number two. Regal and it'll bring up a second down. They're going to call it eight. Play games about two yards. Second down, goal from the eight. You see, you know, a team like uh, Wimber with the offense they run is like, there's, you know, their plays are big plays. So, you know, inside the ten, it's it's interesting to see what they run, how they're going to run it here. Uh, you know, you have two out to the top of your screen, so it might be a looking for a pass, and that is a pass, and Guype is rolling. Look in the corner of the end zone. And we have a touchdown, Wimber. Wow, that was a great great play by Dakota Guy, able to get that off, rolling out to his left. Pressure almost immediately. That was Matt Barkley coming down with the catch, and it was a great job by Guy to see the pressure coming, keep moving back, backwards, and was able to make the throw and find his man in the corner of the end zone. Uh, yeah, and Jim, he, you know, he was wide up, and Guy was able to just pretty much lay it out there. Yeah, he sailed it right in there, and that gives Wimber a 6 nothing lead. Point Henry, one after. Try the point after. This is number 41, Jake Hanley, the senior. And his kick is blocked. You know, we saw him in warm-ups. He was making field goals from 40 yards deep, so we know the kid has a strong leg. But uh, obviously there, uh, Black Lake Valley's defense was able to get some penetration and keep it to a 6-0 score. So we have one minute, 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Wimber 6, Black Lake 0, and Black Lake will be getting the ball on their kickoff. Okay, Wimber's going to be kicking off here. Back deep, we have three Black Lake players. Sheasley in the middle. Well, if the Wimber kickly, kicker Hanley kicking off, and again, we mentioned of his strong leg. So we're going to see if uh, he may, he'll be able to put a touchback in and probably not kick it to number 12, because you don't want to see him get the ball in a situation like this. And they do just that, kick it away from Sheasley. Has some trouble feeling the ball. He picks it up at the four. He has nowhere to go. He's going to be wrapped up at about the 12-yard line, and that's where Blackwood Valley will start their second drive with a minute 24 on the clock, down 6-0. Returns it to the 10, where he's tackled by Jake Colcock and Troy Smith. All spotted at the Blackwood 12, first and 10. They'll bring up a first and uh, 10 for Blacklick at their own 12-yard line. And again, we have we saw Wimber on their second drive open it up and pass a little bit more. We're going to see if Blacklick does the same or they're going to stick with Sheasley on the ground. And they're going to give it to Sheasley. And he's up over the 15 to the 16-yard line for a gain of four. Jim, I think that was actually Grant and Regal on that number 27. Okay. We got a definitely a, a great crowd here. We were commenting right before the game started that we, you know it didn't look like it was going to be packed, but it's definitely a good crowd here at Wimber. Obviously, they only have one-sided bleachers nowadays, but uh, you know it's really a, a, a great night here for football. Definitely a great night in the West Pack. Uh, this is the game of the week for a lot of different oh, media outlets, and uh, I'm glad we picked this one, Dan. We have a pitch out here, cut to the inside. He's going to pick up about two or three on that one. And the clock is rolling with 32 seconds to go in the first quarter. It'll bring up a third down for Blacklick. And we'll see if they get off another play here. The Wimbers D line's looking like they, they're at least they're at least heavier than uh, than the Vikings, but uh, we'll see if they can keep continuing to get penetration and force these backs who are coming to the line of scrimmage at times laterally, see if they can you know keep them laterally and just string them outside. 
as we see here, Wimber does not have installed the play clocks as we've seen the past few weeks. So uh, a little bit behind on the game. Uh, you saw Clearfield have them, uh, the Point Stadium has them, and I believe Tyrone had them as well. So it's a new thing in high school football having the play clock displayed. Wimber still does not, and uh, they just ran out the clock there. It'll bring up. Uh, a Folks, there's a, there's a look at Coach Matt Grohal for the Wimber Ramblers. Second season at the helm. Last year they were, they were the District 5A runners up. Lost a North Star at Somerset High School last year. In that game, the great Colin Bryan from Wimber was hurt. He's actually a walk on right now at Penn State. Yeah, that's just a tremendous thing to see to try to uh, continue your football career at such a high level. You know, we, we don't have to talk about the Penn State allegations, but it obviously opens up more room for walk ons. Uh, we know Shane McGregor from Central Cambria, he's up there. He's the third string quarterback at Penn State. So, you know, you know it's. It's a tough situation up there, but it offer, definitely offers more room for walk-ons and definitely local guys that have the dreams of playing at Penn State might have a better chance now in Absolutely. the next few years. You know, Jim, I was living out in Arizona last year, and upon moving back, it's amazing that it's still the caliber of play that's here. Obviously, population decreased, but the play is still great. It's very good football in uh, Black Lake Valley, third down and three. Call out the play. It's a pitch out. He's cut, and, and he picks up a first down. And that was Sheasley, who else? And he picks up the first down for Black. Well, gets him up to about the 30 yard line. Here. Yeah, you know, Wimber just found out the hard way. If you let him get even one step outside, he's going to be able to turn that corner. Wimber's still playing aggressive with the defensive backs. Yeah, it's been the Johnny Sheasley show for uh, Black Oak Valley. There's no secret of who's going to get the ball a lot. And there he goes. Be able to make some cuts inside of traffic. You know, that's pretty special for a running back to do, to make the cuts not to the outside, to the inside, and go for a couple extra yards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you have this pursuing, just pursuing defenders coming the other way. Jim, you know, just like you said. How much, though, does he remind you running the ball of Austin Cunningham? Yeah. Really just a, almost a spitting image as last week. Second and one. Yeah, very fluid running, uh, you know, very confident. They have uh, the speed and quickness to beat you to the outside, but they're not afraid to go inside. Sheasley's a very good player, one of the best we've seen, and we've seen a number of good ones early on this season. Bring up a second down and one. 10.52 left in the first quarter. 6 nothing Wimber. Blackwood Valley has the ball at their own 35. A fumble. Sheasley was fighting for extra yardage. It looks like a Black Lake Valley player recovers it. Sheasley fumbling the football. That's number 80, 84, he Justin Paul, the senior. Justin Paul, number 84, recovering the loose ball. That was a good hit there by Wimbert. Able to take the ball out of the hands of Grant Regal, who got through the line for a few, but then fumbled it. Yeah, he's trying to get those extra yards. You got to secure the ball in a situation last night or last last week. I was at the pit game. You saw Russell Shell obviously trying to go for extra yardage. He got stripped. He was able to knock over some defenders, but of course the ball was the number one priority. Sheasley trying to dance. He does a spin move for about a yard to get out of that trouble. He's really a magician back there running the ball. Shane Almodover making the tackle for Wimber. You know, we've seen great running backs uh, like James Oliver out of Tyrone, uh, Casey Gray at Bellwood, of course Brady Moore at Central, and uh, you know, Sean Delfour still. Sheasley ranks right up there with all of them yeah. early on in this game. You can tell uh, how he runs, how he handles himself. He's a very good player. They'll bring up a second down at eight. A reverse for Blacklick, and they get right to midfield. And we'll set up a third down and about five for them. Like number 75 for Wimber. Shane Almadova. There's a third down and five, as I said. Third or 50 yard line for Blacklick Valley. They were able to get into Wimber territory earlier, but not much came of it. Uh, obviously, they're trying to pick up the keep this drive going. They don't want to give Wimber the ball again because Wimber's able to control that clock and keep the ball out of Sheasley's hands. And it's pretty obvious what both teams are trying to do early on in this game. 
And we have a timeout, Blackwood Valley. Blackwood Valley has to be put a Jim, uh, you know, obviously in the Black Lives Matter huddle, they're talking about what play they're going to be running. What do you think about a play action here, or possibly maybe a run with Sheasley and then a pass from that? You know, I'd like to see them try to get to the outside a little bit. They've been running to the inside a lot. Uh, Sheasley's been able to knife his way through. I don't know how some of these runs, but you'd like to see them maybe uh, maybe a pitch out to, or maybe someone not Sheasley getting the ball. You know, just to keep the defense honest and you know, he attracts all the attention. Maybe get one of your other backs the ball. And see what he can do and make a play for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Coach Will Zamboni for the Black Lake Valley Vikings, you know, trying to turn this program around. Who, you know, just a few years ago they were, you know, one of the best teams in the West Pack, falling off a little bit. But starting with a three and zero record, you know, able to stay on the field here, not just stay on the field, but competing greatly with Wimber, who's, you know, obviously the, the class program in the West Pack. Absolutely, yeah. Wimber is one of those teams you always know, you always know about, and they've had such a great tradition dating back to the 1930s. You know, they've continued it up until now. So, you know, Blackwood Valley is trying to stay on the map here and uh, trying to make a name for themselves. Third down at five. Pitch out to Sheasley. They're just going to go right to him. And they marked him out of bounds. He was able to stay on his feet, break some tackles, but he stepped out of bounds. That'll bring up about a fourth down and two for Blacklock Valley. And it's decision-making time for Coach Will Zambonini. Yeah, they'll say they're going to go for it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I Vikings making a few subs here. Well, Sheasley is the punter, so whatever they do, he's going to be on the field. So it's, you can't really tell at this point whether they break the huddle, what they're going to do. I just, I'm expecting them to go for it, and that's just what they're going to do. Sheasley's lined up in shotgun, so it may be – or no, he isn't. They try fullback up the middle. There's a flag on the play, so hold your, hold your horses. It would have been a stop for Wimber and a turnover on downs, but we have a flag. It was a little late fly. It could have, or we might be seeing a personal foul here. And it is on Wimber, and it keeps the Black Lake Valley drive alive. That's big for them. Let's see the call here. We have a, a five-yard face mask. Looking down at Coach Grohal now, just shaking his head. It's a bit, that's obviously a big penalty there for the Ramblers. Yeah, that's, those are just silly mistakes, you know, just wrap up at the legs like you're supposed to and not, you know, don't, don't be grabbing face masks. But again, you know, Blackwood Valley on the right end of that play. First down and 10, getting the ball to Sheasley. That's what they do best, and he's able to make the first wave of tacklers miss. He gets about four yards on first down. Shane Almodovar on the tackle there for Wimber. We're seeing his name a lot. He's making a lot of plays. But uh, that was a good run by Sheasley, able to make that first wave of tacklers miss. Brush him to the side and you know, try to make him his next play. You know, good running backs are always looking for that that next level. You know, they always know they can win the first level. Let's see what they could do after that. And uh, Sheasley did a good job there. Bring up a second down and seven. 8-14 on the clock, Blackwood Valley. And we have a good play there by the Wimber defense. That's big, number 56 for Wimber. Or no, 66, 66, Sam Blau, the 6'2", 270 senior, one of the biggest players on the field, and he made his presence known right there. And puts Blackwood Valley in a tough situation again, third and ten. They have yet to attempt a pass in this game, so you know maybe they try to do something like that. Uh, you can't just give him sweeps to Sheasley and hoping he gets it every time. you got to open up the playbook a little bit here, and we're going to see what happens. We're going to set up the screen, and he has room to run, but not that much room. That's 75 Almodovar again. Almodovar is all over the field tonight. Uh, the screen was set up, and uh, the blockers were not there. Almodovar, the senior. And that brings up a fourth down and six, 7.13 to go in the half. We have a 6 nothing score, Wimber leading. And Blackwood Valley, not really in a punting zone. They're probably going to go for it again. Last time they were aided by a penalty to pick up the first down. 
This time they're going to have to get six down to the Wimber 30. They have a rollout. Ray rolling out. Going deep. It's a floater. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by number 15, Matt Barkley of Wimber. And that's ending the Black Lake Valley drive. You know, he really just floated up into double coverage. Uh, didn't really give his receiver a chance. But again, another another penalty on fourth down. Oh, that's big. Saves Blackwood Valley from a turnover and keeps their drive going. You know, Wimber's really shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, Jim, you know, you said the Ramblers had that covered perfectly double, double coverage. The Vikings only, uh, you know, released one wide receiver on that. The penalty was after, after the interception, so Wimber retains the ball. Or no, they don't. I'm confused. I thought he said it, but, well, roughing the pass. Yeah, that was a roughing the pass, which Blackwood Valley will retain the ball. I thought it was a block in the back at first, excuse me. But again, as I was saying, Blackwood Valley doing well on third or fourth downs with aided by penalties. That's two in a row, and that puts them down at the 21-yard line of Wimber. And uh, they're going to be entering the red zone here very shortly for the first time in the game. That's 6.44 left in the half, and the first time they'll be in the red zone. It's a double handoff again to 12, Sheasley, and he only gets two yards inside the 20 to the 19. We'll bring up a second down and eight. Another flag. We have another flag here, so hold on. Again, Almodovar on the tackle. Sheasley there, looked like he outran his blockers almost. He's been doing that a lot lately. So that play never happened. It was a five-yard penalty on Wimber for encroachment. So that brings up a second or first down to five from the 16-yard line. Uh, Wimber, that's three big penalties here on this drive for Black Lake Valley. And they're really self-inflicted wounds. Yeah, they really are. And you can see the quarterback of their offense, uh, the defensive end on defense, Dakota Guy, you know, trying to, to get his teammates up and to keep their heads in the game here. It's an inside handoff. That's Grant Regal on the carry there. And he got inside the 15-yard line to about the 13-yard line. And it'll be a second down and two for Blackwood Valley. Six minutes to go in this first half. Six-nothing, Wimber leads it, but Blackwood Valley driving thanks in a large part to Wimber penalties. Looking for Sheeza to get out wide here. They haven't really uh, opened up the playbook yet, but again, they're only down 6 nothing, and they've controlled a large portion of this clock. There he is again on that play they like to run with him. How he was able to stay in bounds, I really don't know, but he gets down to about the five-yard line. That's a nice little eight-yard run on third down. Yeah, Jim, we got to see that a couple times on the sideline. He's tiptoeing, but he's still breaking tackles at the same time. It's really, really amazing. The balance on him is unbelievable. Yeah, you know, you know I was just going to say that, you know, the balance and the patience of a running like, runner like that, obviously the speed and quickness and the strength come into play, but, but, but the balance and patience and vision, you know, is really what's making these uh, these second efforts for him when he gets into the, into the second half of the Wimber defense. So we have a run up the middle there. Regal on the carry. Maybe a couple on that play will bring up a second down. Five minutes and 30 seconds on the clock, and it is rolling here in the first half. Six nothing score. You know, this Ball seems like this game's been going by real quick. Yeah, it really does. Well, not a lot of passing and a whole lot of running, and it'll do that to you. I like what Blacklick's been doing. They're, you know, they're staying honest with their game plan, running up the middle, throwing it outside. And we have a timeout, Blackwood Valley here stopping the clock at 5.14 to go, left in the second quarter. They have a second and three from the three, and they're down 6 nothing here, but they are answering the bell set by Wimber. Yeah, Jim, like I was saying, uh, you know, talking about the Blackwood game plan, you know, a lot of teams, if they're in trouble in a game, and uh, if things aren't going right at the beginning. They're gonna they'll just start giving it to their to their best player. But you know the Vikings are making Wimber you know stay honest with those inside handoffs. 
which uh, you know is giving Sheasley that room to the outside. It seems like a lot. And conversely, you can't really say anything bad about Wimber's defense either. It's just been those penalties that have uh, lengthened the drive. Absolutely, the penalties are the ones that are really getting to Wimber here. They've come up and made the stops on fourth down. And of course, they almost had the interception there by Barkley that had, was overturned by the penalty. So, again, we, we've seen in a few games earlier this year that McCourt Forest Hills game where Forest Hills just absolutely shot themselves in the foot a million times and it took them right out of the game. Yeah, you know, it really does remind you of that. It's the same type of feel, low scoring game, just as the just as the one at the Point Stadium was. So we'll see what happens here with uh, Blackwood Valley inside the five here. And I I have a guess at who's gonna get the ball. <laughs> He's down to the bottom left of your screen. There he is. Fighting for yards. And he fights his way into the end zone for a Black Lake Valley touchdown. Time to score. Six to six. Five oh nine left in the half. Johnny Sheasley with another run, and he is doing it all for Black Lake Valley. Jim, how about those pitches outside? They're not just pitching it, you know, back just a few yards. They're really getting it out wide there. That's forcing Wimber to, to try to get their ends really outside, and that's giving Sheasley that extra running lane either to cut it up or to break it outside even farther. Absolutely. It's just giving him space, and that's all he needs. He doesn't need a lot, but that, that pitch back a little bit further gives him that. We're gonna have a timeout here on the two-point conversion. We have an injured player by Wimber, that's 75. Shane Aldovar, who's really been tearing up here. He's limping off on his own power, but he's gonna to have to come out of the game. Blackwood Valley set for a two-point conversion here. And they just scored from two yards out, or three yards out, so they're gonna be looking to run a similar play here. Jim, 75, you know, Alma Dovar, a guy 6'1", 285, making tackles downfield in this game, 10 yards downfield at times. Just a testament of his athletic ability, you know, big guys can move, and uh, the point after is no good by Sheasley, but as to my point last night, as big guys can move, if you watch the BYU-Boise State game, it was a 7 nothing game, mm -hmm. only touchdown defensive lineman by Boise State, <laughs> and if you can even believe that. There is hope for you get big guys. Number six and the officials. <laughs> Folks, we're looking to take this moment to give a little quick shout out to our sponsors, the Haven Lounge on Langhorn Avenue in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and Clark's Corner Store in Westmont, located across from Westmont Middle School. So you saw there a big drive by Blackwood Valley, you know, forget about the penalties, let's talk about Johnny Sheasley and what he's been able to do in this game. Yeah, really, you know, just his vision um, and his patience, what we already talked about. But it, it's not just that, it's his ability to kind of stay cool and, you know, it seems like every play is a new play for him where he's able to make something happen every time. That play inside the red zone where he is able to tiptoe down the, you know, it just it just really showed what kind of player he is, showed the athletic ability he has, and you know, he's as good as anyone we've seen so far. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, West, the West Pet gets the bad rap. Obviously, they're much smaller schools. Um, you know, we've seen in the past, you know, LHAC teams taking them off, but, you know, this Sheasley, he could play anywhere around here. Absolutely. She's with the kick and it gets inside of the 20. Wimbers fields it. Looks like one of the Tomlinsons on that return. That was Devin Tomlinson. That's number two. And returns it to the Wimber 37 First and 10 for on the tackle. Wimber starts their drive at the 36-yard line. Tomlinson gets the ball on a inside counter again, and he gets some good yardage there. Then Tomlinson carrying the football. Close to the about the 44-yard line, we'll call it. That's about a gain of eight. Picking up about seven yards. Wimber's been able to consistently move the football this first half. Yeah, the, the fumble on the first drive really cost them because they were marching in for a score. They were able to, last drive, use the passing game a little bit 
to open up what they were going to do. Let's see if they try that again. There's 432 remaining in the first half. It's a 6-6 game. Wimber driving the ball near mid midfield. Guy began on the pass, gets it out to Barkley on a on a nice little screen pattern, and he was able to pick up the first down. Uh, you see that play a lot in college, uh, just getting the ball out to your receiver, see if he can make a play, and Barkley, again, was able to make a play. Yeah, absolutely, and he was aided off by a great block there by number two, Devin Tomlinson. <laughs> First down and 10 up to Wimber 41. Well, Jim, it's shaping up to be another great game. This could be our fourth in a row that could go down to the wire. Obviously, we saw another half, but you know, it's been a great first half so far. Yeah, it's surprising that we've actually been able to pick four, four good games in a row. Let's hopefully we can do it five. We'll see what's up on top for next week. In a nice run there on the inside. And that's Dan Tomlinson, Tomlinson again. Dan Tomlinson will try to give him credit where credit is due. That was a little Devin to Dan connection there. Devin the actually board. almost botched the snap. The snap was a little bit low, but he was able to get it off. He was able to get it and get it off to his brother. We have a second down and two here for Wimber. 3.35 to go in the half. We have a 6-6 six -six game. It's a direct snap to 34, I believe, and he gets to the 28-yard line. That's well, a great call there by Wimber's offensive coordinator, Trevor Neary, the 6'2", 202-pound fullback. He's a senior, and uh, he used his size there, and he was rumbling down inside the 30-yard line. And uh, Blacklick Valley, again, still having trouble stopping this Wimber offense, but it's, you know the score is only 6-6. Blacklick Valley using a lot of time on their drives, and uh, a Wimber uh, fumble leaves the Ramblers with only six points. Same play to 34, Nary. He gets another eight. Jimmy, you see these methodical drives. Obviously, Blacklick had theirs, but Wimber seems to be able to do it consistently so far. And you, you wonder how much longer Blacklick is going to be able to uh, you know, keep this level of play up. Play games, eight yards. Roll it to Blacklick. Dan, how hard is it for a linebacker to, uh, you see here, Wimber, they've snapped the ball to four or five different guys, so you know, a lot of football is read and react, but it's hard whenever a different guy is getting the ball every play. There's a fumble there, picked up by the lineman. Looked like his knee was down right when he grabbed it, but... Mary fumbles the football, but it's okay, not as hard. Fumble. Yeah, Jim, you know, one thing that comes to mind for me is... Uh, when I played at Bishop McCourt, we played uh, in 2004, we played Troy Harris in Bedford. And, you know, he was one of the kings at, you know, just having his motions perfectly timed for their triple option attack. And, you know, they, they gave it to so many different players. And, you know, that really reminds me of this Wimber team who has so many different weapons, but they're able to employ their offense so, uh, so precisely. That's not good, the number eight. Dan Tomlinson. And he picks up the first down. 2.09 remaining in the half. We have a 6 6 game, but Wimber is in. Blackwood Valley to uh, the red zone. Garrett Smith on the time. First and 10 for Wimber. There's the direct snap. Get up in there. Fumble. Fumble the football. Fumbled out of bounds. Dakota Blake carrying the football. Fumbling the football. Going out of bounds. The ball will be marked at the five yard line. We have a minute 48 remaining in the half. Wimber inside the 10 yard line here of Black Lake. So we have some confusion here who's going to be going. Then we have an injured player there for Wimber. That's Dakota Kipe coming off the field, number 12. Number two coming in there is Tomlinson. Jared Marizio. Marizio on the carry there. 
I haven't called his name much. He's uh, one of the leading tacklers on defense. He's just a sophomore. Oh, that's good to see another Italian there. Wimber uh, has some some great athletes in the past, a bunch of Italians, and we're glad that at least they at least have one here. Oh, I'm sure they have more than one. Two, it's third and one at the Black League three. Brings up a big third down with a minute 30 to go in the half. And we have a touchdown, Wimber. Touchdown number two, Devin Tomlinson. Was it two? Uh, eight. It was Dan. That was Dan. Rather, that was eight, Dan Tomlinson. There's you know, a lot of confusion. Jim, how's that for a methodical drive? That was a great way to answer Black Lake Valley's uh, long drive, and uh, Wimber was able to score rather quickly there. Uh, it was about a four-minute drive there. Uh, you know, no penalties, no mistakes, and the kick after. And this one is good, and its score is 13 to six. Wimber leads it with a minute 23 to go in the half. Black Lake six. Family, we'll take this moment to take a break. You're watching this on the D6 Sports Network. Join us every week as we as we release our live broadcasts and articles about the following week, top games and top players in the area. And we're back here. With a minute 23 remaining, Wimber leading 13-6 are going to be kicking off the ball here. And again, Black Lake Valley has three guys deep. And they, again, stay away from Johnny Sheezy wisely. Black Lake Valley able to get a nice little return there up into the 25-yard line. Number 21, Garrett Smith there. Garrett Smith, the 5'6", 132-pound junior. Returns it to the Black Lake Here we go, Black Lake, two timeouts. Hasn't put it in the air, or they put it in the air one time, so can she easily take them down the field here? 75 yards in a minute 15. Great Bryant making the tackle for Wimber. Wimber sticking with the 5 2 front here. Nice run there by Blackwood Valley on first down. Worthington. Worthington on the carry. He gets up to over the 30-yard line to the 32. That's a skin of seven. And brings up a second down and three. And we are under a minute here at Wimber Stadium. The clock is rolling here. Blackwood Valley not with a lot of urgency. So they might be happy to go down here 13-6 in the half. Sheasley's taking this one to the outside. Sheasley able to make a few guys miss. Not everyone, but he tried. 32 John seconds Sheasley and counting ball. here. Now we have a stoppage of play. As you can see, he draws a lot of attention. And Donaldson on the tackle. Play game three. It'll I'm be sure. Who called the timeout there? Looks like the ref timeout. No, that'll be Black the Valley taking the ti timeout there. They have a third down and short coming up here. Now, Jim, that really doesn't make too much sense to me. If you're going to call a timeout with 26 seconds left on third down, why wouldn't you call it on, you know, second and five like they had when they had almost a minute left? And again, they're just running the ball here, so they're not really taking a lot of chances downfield. We have we only see them to one pass, and that was on a penalty that was negated on that pass, but it was intercepted. So, you know, Blacklick Valley not trying to throw the ball a lot. And we have 29 seconds left, not 26. They added three seconds here, so it's 13-6. Under 30 seconds to go in the half. And we're back out on the ball. And it's a third down. And we'll call it about one here. Uh-oh, Sheasley throwing it. On a slant. Oh! He had his man in stride. Yeah, Sheasley with the bullet there. Pass intended for number 84. Justin Paul. Justin Paul was the intended receiver for Blacklick Valley. It almost looked like he ran two, two steps with the ball in his hands, never secured it. And Blacklick Valley misses a great opportunity. You know, it probably wasn't going for a touchdown there, but definitely would have put Blacklick Valley in better chance to. Uh, it's a fourth down and one. 
Yeah, Jim, you gotta wonder what the safety was doing on that play. The safety's number one responsibility is not to get beat deep. That was Devin Tomlinson on the save. Johnny Sheasley, the punter here, gets off a not a very good kick at all. Sheasley's punt is down at the Blackwick 47. If Weber has good field position, if they want to take a chance here with 22 seconds left in the half, she usually did not get off a good kick. You know, I think they almost would have been better off taking their chance here with a fourth and one. She usually running the ball. You know, I, I trust I trust my main player to get one yard if I'm the Blackwood coach. Right, right. But it gives Wimber a gift wrapped opportunity here inside uh, Blackwood Valley territory. Well, we've seen the Ramos can definitely throw it downfield. There's a direct snap again. They're just going to run it straight up the middle. And we had a fumble there on the play. Trevor Neri carrying and fumbling. And Blackwood Valley recovers the ball. Neri was the ball carrier and he fumbled away. Blackwood Valley plucks out there. Blackwood Valley lines up with the ball at their own 40 yard line. Yeah, and, you know, that's some old school stuff right there. You're, you're getting those direct snaps and you're literally just running right into the back of your lineman and just try to gain as many yards as you can. And obviously that, that creates a big pile and we saw the ball stripped right out of his hands. We have 15 seconds to go in the first half. Blackwood Valley with the ball, 41 at the 41 yard line here. I was expecting them not to take a very big chance here, just a run. But now they're gonna try that halfback pass once again. Sheasley had nowhere to throw it. He breaks the tackle. Oh, he. Oh. Wow, that was an incredible play. Sheasley got the pass off. Looked like a face mask or horse collar. Wow. That really was pretty insane. Yeah, you got to see Sheasley's playmaking ability. Intended for Justin Ball. Looks the clock didn't go off in time. Still showing 14 seconds on the scoreboard. But Jim, how about that? You know, if he didn't get pressure in his face there, Sheezy, when he was coming on the, to, you know, to our side, he could have easily uh, hit his receiver again, number 84, because uh, Wimber's secondary got beat deep again. So they're going to fix the game clock and put it at nine seconds here. We have a 13-6 score. Again, on that play, you saw Sheezy come to this side, nowhere to go, breaks the tackle, still gets over, finds three men, and almost finds his man downfield. Yeah, how about the throw that he had? The throw he got off was unbelievable. And that should be intentional grounding there. Nothing doing. No receiver in the area is still inside the tackles, it looked like. Ray, the officials are thinking Wait for the official the word here. And that looks like a pass interference call. That's a very questionable call. Black Valley was not getting the pass off at all. And folks, the fans here are absolutely furious with the call. There's no way it should have been pass interference. Uh, quarterback for Blackwood barely had time to throw the ball, let alone establish a receiver to get the ball. And you also have to take into consideration a catchable pass, which was thrown in the dirt, which right, just yeah. very, very strange call there. So when so so Blackwood Valley, Gro Grohal is wondering what the heck that call was, as you can see there on your screen. So are we, because we really don't know what happened there. Uh, Blackwood Valley again gets a gift wrap chance here to tie the game. Five seconds left in the half. They're going to try to make a play here. Look for that halfback pass to Sheasley. Now it's just a direct. Got a good pass off. And we have a touchdown on oh Blackwood Valley ended by another penalty of Wimber. A last second heave, and that's a touchdown for Blackwood. And that'll tie the game at 13. That was 84. Justin Paul making up for that, that dropped one a few plays ago. And folks, that's, that could be one of the most amazing plays of the year that I've seen so far. That was an unbelievable play there. Justin Paul. 
What a catch, what a throw. That's a 44-yard touchdown. But we were talking earlier, this, the few plays that Cheesy was throwing, uh, you know, a few plays ago, that, that Wimber was not playing back. Wimber was letting him get behind them, and, you know, you cannot do that and expect to get out of the half alive, especially with an arm like Cheesy. Excuse me, I said it was tied up. It's only 13-12. to 12. There's no time on the clock. Uh, Blacklick Valley is going to try here for a two-point conversion to take a one-point lead, their first lead of the game it would be. They get a pitch out, and he is knocking in. 13-12, heading to the half. Again, crazy plays here, some weird calls, but we're heading to halftime, so stick with us. We'll be back at the break. And we're back on the uh, back here in the second half. Uh, Wimber will be kicking off the Blackwood Valley as again, if you joined us earlier. Uh, Blackwood Valley. Uh, benefited from some Wimber penalties and they scored and they're kicking it to Johnny Sheasley, the dangerous player from Blacklick. He was not able to get past that tackle. Good job by Wimber special teams there. Jim, we're going over a few things, you know, at halftime and stuff. Uh, you know, a few things standing out for me, for uh, Wimber, Wimber defensively, you know, there on the field right now, was, well, A, the um, the fact that they were, that Black was able to get behind them with just one receiver. Like, that's, that's big in the defensive secondary. But then another thing is the tackling. The open field tackling has to be improved. With Sheasley, obviously, you know he's a he's a uh, all area type player. But you know you got you got to break down when you have him on the perimeter to be able to you know to, to do good things. Obviously, we saw Blackwood Valley not pass for most of the half. Then again, towards the end, they started using it, and they were able to score on that last second heave. So maybe you'll see Blackwood Valley throw a little bit a little bit more. Johnny Sheasley, listed as a quarterback, doesn't really play it. Maybe he'll throw the ball a little bit. So we had Worthington there on first down on a sweep reverse, and he did not get much of anything. He actually lost a yard. So it is 13-12 Wimber here in the second half, just beginning. 11:25 left in the half, or in the quarter rather. Back to pass, another one-on-one -on -one coverage, and we're having another flag. Wimber intercepts it, but watch it here. We're going to see what happens, and he's able to return the ball. But we have a flag again on the play. And Matt Barkley intercepting the pass, but guess what? Matt Barkley was the interceptor there for Wimber, the but again, another flag. And Blacklick Valley is living off the penalties. That's two interceptions for Matt Barkley that were taken back because of penalties. And again, the Wimber faithful is not happy with these kind of calls at all. Uh, it seems all the calls are going in Blacklick Valley's favor. What are you looking at? And it'll give Blacklick Valley new life and a first down. We have 11.08 to go in the third quarter. Blacklick Valley. There's not much you can complain about that. Whatever the, the defender's arms are outstretched, that's usually going to be called. Of all the calls we've seen tonight, that was probably one of the more clear ones we've seen. But again, it's first and 10 from the 39 of Blacklick. They're going to give it to Sheasley, see if he's going to make something here. We have a flag. It's fumble. Looked like he was down, but they never saw it. Sheasley carrying fumbles. That was Barkley there again. And there's a flag on the play. Matt Buckley, number 15 for Wimber. We have a holding on Blacklick Valley. So they're going to give 10 yards back the other way to Blacklick. Sheasley fumbled on the tail end of the play, but it looked like he was down, and he was marked down. And you hear a sarcastic cheer from the Wimber faithful. And it puts Wimber inside, or Blacklight back inside their own 30 at the 29. We have 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. Blacklick Valley with a first down and 20. Yeah, these are the situations Blacklick Valley wants to avoid. You know, these long downs, these first and twenties, because you know we've seen their passing game, and it's only been that la that last second heave in the half. So you know they don't have a consistent passing game from what we've seen. The screen is set up. Sheasley one-handed catch. Sheasley had a one-handed catch, almost eluded two Wimber tacklers. They did not let him sneak through, but he was. Inches away from breaking that one. That, brings up. that was Dakota Gipe there on the tackle. Dakota Gipe on the tackle. That brings up a, a second down and 21. 
second and 21. Blacklick Valley loses a yard on the play. They tried the screen. Uh, Wimber read it well. They're, again, the second time they tried the screen, just doesn't seem like the Blacklick Valley blockers get out there in mm -hmm. time to have the screen really develop. Yeah, absolutely. Delayed handoff to Sheasley. And he found some room to run. He's going to get about 12, 13 yards and make it a more manageable third down here. Jim, yeah, just like you said on the screen, it seems like Blacklick, obviously they've been able to drive the ball, but it seems like they're getting out, of the, getting out in front of their blockers at times and having to cut back or, you know, bring it outside as faster than they'd like to. As again, you saw another play where you need to wait for your blockers again on that delay at handoff, you know, if everyone looking the other way, just hand it off to Sheasley, and of course he gets a big gain of 14, setting up a third down and seven, 9.39 left to go in the third quarter. And they're gonna send out a pass, looking for Sheasley. Thrown into double coverage of Wimber. That is good defense by number eight, Tomlinson, and number 24, Maruzia. That was a great play by Tomlinson. He got turned around a little bit, was able to get his one arm in the air to deflect it back a little bit. Yeah, you could tell uh, the Black Lake Valley quarterback, they had another receiver coming over top, but they were looking at number 12, Sheasley, the whole time. Uh, you know, made it easier for the Wimber defenders to key in on him. And of course, you shouldn't need any help. You know, you know who's getting the ball. You should know that's who to cover. Absolutely. You know, Jim, with that, that first and 20, that's so big, that totally changed the game plan there. Black, like we saw them, you know, at first coming out, it looked like they were just ready to uh, march the ball down the field with just a few passes, but there they really had to air it out. And Barkley fields the punt. Matt Barkley taking the punt at the end of the third. He gets down to about the 38-yard line of Tackle Wimber, line and that's where Wimber will start their first second half drive here with 9.21 on the clock. Wimber holds a slim 13 to 12 lead here. And again, this is a four straight week. We've seen an excellent game, an excellent uh, competition here. Two teams really giving it all. And uh, both teams here are playing very hard. Absolutely, Jim. Uh, after this play, let's talk a little, bit about, a little bit about the West Pack and, you know, what we've seen so far, and especially in this game here tonight, how they match up with the, with the other conference grades. Remember, we'll start here first and 10 at the 38-yard line, as we mentioned, 921 on the clock. Direct handoff not handled well. That's going to be a sack, I guess if you can call it. It is a tackle for loss. Back down to the 35-yard line. That was Grant Regal again there, number 27. 5'11", 177 senior. And then, as you were saying, talking about the the Wimber or the West Pack rather, and, you know, we've seen a, you know North Star get upset on that first week, but we still have a strong belief that they can be a good team. Portage has been a nice surprise, and of course Berlin is just running what they're running down there, and they look like the team to beat. But again, one of these teams could move to will move to 4-0. We have another direct handoff here. And he gets up over the 50 for a first down. Good run there by Wimber. Hey, Jim, you, you know, you'd have to put Berlin out in front right now, just that, the way that they've been winning. Um, you know, both of these two teams today here have, have won their, their past uh, two games, or three games, I'm sorry, as well by large margins. But, you know, really, like, they, they can be top competitors in the Westpac with Berlin. Absolutely, yeah, we talked about earlier this week, you know, neither team really seemed to be challenged yet. You know, this was going to be a good challenge for both teams, and again, we're in the third quarter, it's a one-point game, and it's exactly what you thought it would be. And he was able to break a few tackles there, gets another first down. And again, number 20, Dustin, Dustin Blau, the 5'11", 170-pound junior. Yeah, he has it. We've been calling a lot of the Tomlinsons. But, you know, you know, we've seen Blau carry the ball, Maurizio carry the ball, uh, Neri carry the ball. So we talked about how uh, four different guys have 100 yards. You know, they're looking to replace uh, Colin Bryan, who had a couple thousand last year. You know, he was a great running back for the area. So, you know, Wimber uh, distributing the load to a lot of different guys, and it's working for them so far in this game. Yeah, that comes down really to great coaching, you know, just an ability to, to see your strength, strengths and weaknesses. 20 again, that is Blau. And he, and he scores a touchdown. Dustin Blau, three straight runs, and it leads to a Wimber touchdown. Wimber will take, will move to a 19 to 12 lead point pending, but again, big run for Dustin Blau, 36 yards out. Dustin Blau, number 20. Yeah, you can't say enough about the running there. Having some lead blockers really helps with that single wing. You're able to hand it off and then be a lead blocker. 
Wimber able to open up a huge hole. And Blau did the rest after the TD. Yeah, Blau was able to make a few guys miss, uh, you know, carry a few guys along for the ride. And again, it's 19 to 12, 809 left in the third quarter. And Hanley with the extra point, and he makes it 20 to 12, Wimber. As Black Valley will receive the next kickoff here, and we have a man down here. So hold on a sec. How about we give away the 50-50 booster ticket? Are you ready for this? Blue ticket. Here we go. Number. Folks, we're trying to get you a number there. Three one one zero four six. That's three one one zero four six. You have that number? Man down there for the bike is able to get it up there. One more time. Blue well, how, how big is that is that drive there for Wimber, you know, coming off, able to stop uh, Black, Lake, Black Lake Valley on their first drive, and, you know, for uh, for Wimber to be able to come out and just really uh, punch it down Black Lake Valley's mouth is really, uh, really key here in that second half. Well, it's a good thing for Wimber because, again, we've talked about a lot of the controversial calls, maybe some calls, and the Wimber kids obviously thinking, you know, maybe they're going against us. So, you know, you don't want your kids playing against the other team and the refs. You want them to focus on the team at hand. They, you don't want them worrying about the refs Absolutely. and begging for calls and stuff like that. The only way you can answer it really is to score a touchdown, play your game, and not worry about the refs. Mm -hmm. Wimber did fine on that. Yeah, especially in these big games when emotions can run high. It's really key. You know, these young athletes are really able to do that here tonight, and I'm really impressed with them. Black Hill Valley fields it at the five. Get up. Get up to about the 25 yard line. And that's where Black Duck Valley will start their next drive at the 25 yard line. We have a 20 to 12 score here, 8.04 left in the third quarter. Uh, Black Duck Valley, uh, again, last drive needed some Wimber penalties to help them move it, but again, a penalty of their own. The holding call really set them back, and they weren't able to recover from that. Uh, Black Lake Valley is a ball control team, not going to take a lot of chances. So, you know, getting in those long drives is not what they want to do. So they're going to be looking to get four or five yards every play here. Let's see if they get it to Sheasley again. That's 27, the ball carrier. Grant Regal. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure why Regal took that one outside. It looked like he had a hole there inside. Yeah, Sheezy was blocking there on the outside and he tried to get around him. Yeah, as a fullback, you know, you don't always have the speed as the running back, so you gotta take your yards so you can get them. A four yard game would be very valuable for Blackwood Valley in this situation. Uh, you know, Sheasley's the guy you want, you know, trying to take the chances, trying to bust it to the outside. You know, Wimber's defensive line is really big, outsizing, it looks like Black Valley in height and weight. Yeah, they're really able to control the line of scrimmage, and that's why you've seen a lot of these inside carries not really work. It's uh, a lot of those runs are Sheasley making things happen, and again, he didn't have any room to run. And, uh, you know, you, you would think uh, the Black Lake Valley uh, coaches would maybe look to go to the outside a little bit more, you know, save, save Sheasley for that fourth quarter. You don't want him running up the middle almost every play. And again, like you mentioned, a big physical defense for Wimber, big kids. Uh, we've called out a few tonight. So we have 6.49 remaining in the third quarter. Black River Valley with a third down and eight. Big play for them. They're going to hand it to the guy they know best, and that's Sheasley. Able to make a few guys miss, but not everyone. He gets down to about the 29-yard line for two yards. We'll bring up a fourth down and six with the clock rolling at 6.30 left in the third quarter. Nah, not at all. 17-14 at half. Looks like a little stoppage here on the play. Sheasley there, back to punt. Sheasley punting. Miss Handles that gets off a better kick than his last one. 
bounces inside the Wimber 40 to about the 38-yard line. Folks, once again, this game is brought to you by the Haven Lounge on Langhorne Avenue in Johnstown, PA. That's there. If you go right by the hospitals there in the 8th Ward section, you'll find some great uh, bars, especially the Haven. They have great food, the world's largest Reuben. And then secondly, we have Clark's Corner Store, who's kind enough to sponsor this game here today. They're right across from Westmont Middle School on Goucher Street. I'm sorry, I'm a knocker. And Wimber will start the drive at their own 38-yard line. 5.58 remaining here in the third quarter. Bunch set to the right of the offense. And that's where they're going. Blau, the man of the last drive, and he gets it again. Another, about a 10-yard gain and another first down for Wimber. He has received the ball the last four times. The Blackman Valley has not found a way to stop him just yet. You know, we were talking about, you know, Wimber... Uh, having to make these open field tackles. And, well, it especially is true now for Black like with Blau really running through these arm tackles here. He's not the biggest kid, but he's definitely a hard runner. Yeah, he runs very hard, and again, we've talked about Wimber controlling that line of scrimmage, and we're starting to see that here in the third quarter here. This is a big drive for Blacklick Valley as well, because they need to s slow them down. Uh, you know, Blacklick Valley does not want to get out in a shootout here in a little bit, so. And a measurement proves that it was a first down by Blau. And the officials indicate first down for Wimber, second down 48 yard line. So set Wimber up at the 48 yard line. I think Dustin's trying to show up shoes in here. Yeah, no, he's just anxious to watch the morning. Well, Jim, you said you, you definitely can't have, you know, these first down runs going for a first down. Uh, Blacklick look, looking like, like we said in the first half that they might be getting a, a little uh, tired with this big Wimber team. First down and 10 here for Wimber. Able to cut it up. Get up over midfield for about a three yard run. Blacklick staying with the 5 3. Really, it's tough to blitz against these, these type of offense because you don't really know who's going, going to get the ball every time. And it's hard to blitz a team that doesn't pass as well. So, you, you, it's a, like we've said before, it's a read and react situation uh, with different guys getting the handoff. We see Guyp, the quarterback, wasn't even in on the last play. He's coming in here now, he's calling in the play. Uh, it's been a lot of uh, running the ball, direct handoff, or direct snaps rather, with Blau and the Tomlinsons. So, uh, you know, if I'm Wimber, I'm sticking with that. Mm -hmm. uh, no need to put the ball in the air. We have Blau getting a carry. Slithers his way into Again, about the 46-yard line. That will bring up a third down here for Wimber and a big stop needed here for Black Valley okay. if they want to stay in this game and keep it a one-score game. Yeah, Jim, really what it comes down to for the Vikings is just every man doing you know, doing their job. Uh, a coaching great that I love is Nick Saban, who, kind of, who really stresses that is about execution and every man doing their job, and you know the results happen themselves. Uh, and against this type of offense, you really have to focus in on that. I'm going to have to put a cap on the Nick Saban references. That's two this <laughs> That's year. Two That's this two year. too many. <laughs> <laughs> I got Urban Meyer today, too. Huh? That's going to be near a first down for Neri. It's, they have indicated it's fourth down. It's going to be about a fourth down and one. Short of a first down by a yard. So what do you do here if you coach Groha? Looks like they're definitely going for it. I think if I'm Wimber, I'm keeping the ball on the ground. Uh, Black Valley has not yet to come up with a, many big plays to stop this Wimber offense that is just rambling down the field, if you will. <laughs> Number 20, Blau gets it, and he has room to run. Breaks another one, hurdles his own man. He's going down to the 10, five, tackled at the one yard line. What a run by Blau, and he has really taken over this third quarter for Wimber. Shows some really good speed there to be able to, to break that out. How about the able to leap over his own player, keep the run going, stay in stride, and almost put it in for the touchdown. 322 remaining here in the third quarter. It's a 20 to 12 score. Wimber going in, looking to add on to this lead. 42 yard run by Justin Block. Well, Jim, if first and goal for the team. Jim, you know there's that cliche line about high school programs: they don't build, they reload. But really, at Wimber, you know you're, you're going to have a back every year that's really going to be able to turn it on. Yeah. Yeah, it seems they always have a good running back. Uh, you know, through the years, Kevin Erickson, Colin Bryan, and now you know, looks like Blau stepping up might be that new guy here. He's only a junior. 
So he could be the, the new man on campus, if you will, for Wimber. And a costly penalty there for Wimber. That's an illegal proceeding first penalty. So it'll set up a first down and seven. 305 in the third. It'll set them up at the seven yard line here. And Wimber's uh, you know, had a lot of problems with penalties tonight. So let's see if this comes into play here. Blackwood Valley able to stuff that play right there. And we have a flag coming in here. So we're going to see what that play is. It looks like personal foul territory there with that after the whistle flag. And a face mask penalty here on Blackwood Valley. That's a personal foul variety. Uh, they don't have 15 yards to give, so it puts the half the distance to the goal inside the five yard line. Wimber's ball, first and goal from the Blackwick three yard line. First down and three, 2.44 remaining here in third quarter. Wimber looking to punch in another score. We have another flag, touchdown signal, but a flag on the play. Dustin Blau gets the touchdown, but we have a flag on the play. You know, that really happens a lot in the red zone. You know, teams bunched up there, not, not much space. You still have 22 men there on the field. And again, another Wimber penalty. This one inside the red zone. So teams have already traded uh, three penalties here after the big run by Blau. So uh, it would only be fitting here if Blackwood Valley comes up with another penalty. Well, first and goal from the 2.35 remaining and uh, yeah, a lot of wasted time here. Uh, we've had three straight first down plays. This is the fourth one, actually. Hand off to Blau. Met in the backfield. Looks like Regal there again, number 27. Big hit there for the Blackleg Valley. Jones on the tackle, ball spotted at the six. Folks, what a beautiful night here at Wimber Stadium. You know, one of the best historic stadiums in our area, if not the most historic. Uh, Jim and I were commenting, you know, they sell the concrete bleachers built into the hill. Uh, it's really a great atmosphere here. Great atmosphere, uh, great uh, long-standing facility. Uh, yeah, Wimber really has a special home and one of the more unique ones here in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, Guype back to pass, going for a fade. Touchdown, Wimber. Perfect pass right on the money by quarterback Dakota Guype. And he hit. We got Tomlinson on that, if I'm not mistaken. Devin Tomlinson. It was a really pretty pass, you know, Jim. Like, it, it was open, but you know, he just laid that out there perfectly. Yeah, great pass, great route. Uh, you know, put it right in the corner of the end zone where it needed to be, where only his receiver could catch it. Uh, you know, almost undefendable play there for Blackwood Valley. They really had no, no chance on that play. And the kick by Jake Hanley, the senior, puts the score at 27-12. We have a minute 40 remaining here in the third quarter. Again, that's Wimber leading 27-12. Blackwood Valley will get the ball here on the next kickoff. You know, looking on the sidelines there at Blackwood, it looks like a little demoralized there. <laughs> You know, it's hard with these small schools, you know, you're playing both ways. There's, you know, a lot of things you have to fight through every game to, uh, you know, to really keep your emotions up. Yeah, and again, like we've said, uh, you know, Blackwood Valley is a team, they don't want to get down by two scores because we've seen this offense and we've seen it's very methodical. Uh, they're very opportunistic, but they're, they don't want to see a big deficit. They don't want to see, uh, you know, being down in the first and 20, third and 20. So, you know. They really need a score here, uh, you know, cap off the third quarter and, you know, a few minutes into the, the fourth, and then they're going to have to figure out a way to stop Wimber. Mm -hmm. If they want to have any chance to win this game. Minute 40 here left in the quarter. 27-12, Wimber is leading it. 
the Wimber really looks like a different team here this second half. Especially on the defensive side of the ball, they're able to make their open field tackles. Able to get pressure in the backfield, which is really huge. And we have a good kick there by Wimber. And it's a touchback. Anytime a ball goes in the end zone, it is a touchback. Uh, we had a little discrepancy in week one. We thought uh, if you touch the ball, then it goes in the end zone. You had to field it. But in high school football, if the ball enters the end zone, it is an automatic touchback. How about Jake Hanley, the kicker for Wimber? He's really a weapon here in the West Pack. Uh, you know, to have a team like Wimber who who may not be able to punch it in every time they're able to get field goals. We saw him uh, at the beginning of the game had 43-yard field goals that he was drilling. Absolutely. It's just like we've always talked about it's such a weapon for high school teams to have good special teams. Uh, you, know, you see Blackhawk Valley, they're going for two every time. It's just nice to have that sure one point. Nice run there for nice run for 22. Maddie Worthington uh, picked up about six, maybe seven. It's a good start there for Blackley, getting some positive yards there. Absolutely, first down. something they really needed here. Uh, again, minute nine left in the quarter, 27-12. Wimber leading it. Uh, Blackwood Valley is going to find a, has to find a way to move the ball here. Sheasley able to avoid some tacklers, keeps his legs moving. Uh, that puts uh, Blackwood Valley at the 35-yard line. Uh, you know, it's a you always hear uh, running back coaches or football coaches say, "Keep your legs moving, keep them churning. Uh, good things will happen." And she's right there, able to hang on to a few Wimber defenders and push his legs for the extra yardage. Yeah, we don't have the stats for it, but you know his yards after contact are, are really tremendous. You know, Jim, comparing him here with another uh, Westpac back that's been doing really good this year is Berlin's Drew Glodfelty. Uh, you know, their stats are around the same and. Really, the, you know, how do you compare him to the, the rest of the West Pack? Do you think that he is one of the best? Absolutely, and just the, you know, we've talked about his balance, uh, his speed, uh, just everything he does. He was able to make a few guys miss there, and he, you can see him run. Just the moves he puts on these guys are unbelievable. We have a flag on the play. But again, just a simple run like that. You know, he hasn't been able to break the big one, but simple runs like that where he's able to make guys miss in traffic is just remarkable. Yeah, his, his, you know, his lateral movement is amazing, but not just that, it's, he's not really losing any speed off of that. And Walk in the back, indicated. Walk in the back here on Blacklick. We have a man down here for Blacklick. So, clock is stopped, 27-12 here. Wimber's leading, 28 seconds to go in the third quarter. Black Lake has the ball and the first down at their own 25. Yeah, we talked about Wimber here not having the play clock in the end zone, but a nice feature they have is the microphones for the referees. You don't only see that in high school football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just nice to keep the fans involved and keep everyone in the press box aware of what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. It's a nice thing. And again, the clock is rolling here 14 seconds to go. They're going to try a pass. Going again, double coverage. Deflected by two Wimber defenders and almost caught by the Blackwood Valley receiver. And that was something the clock. Eight, oh, or eight seconds left here. I just did my time. And it's a second down in 20 for Blackledge Valley. Broken I just did my time in the big pen. Second. The kids were like, what are you going to cheer with us? I'm like, okay. And once again, Blacklick behind the sticks here. Second and 20. You know, eventually, uh, Blackledge Valley, they. It seems like they've been keeping it safe all game, so you might see that wraparound handoff to Sheasley on a delay or a screen pass, screen. and it is a screen pass, and it's not Sheasley. We have another flag on the play. Screen pass to number 27, Regal. Regal there, though, he's able to get those blockers out there in front of him. Big number 75. Ken Carney. 
and the flag goes against Black Lake Valley again. And that's just going to set them. We'll see if Wimber put, pins them deep or keeps it at third down. Hey, Mrs. J. Mrs. J. One second. And it remains second down. Uh, the clock is going to run out here. It's going to go to the fourth quarter. There's a uh, five tenths of a second here, if you will. So once a ball is spotted, the quarter will end with a 27 to 12 score. Second down, 25. And so we'll be back after a short break here. It's a 27-12 score. Uh, Blackwood Valley will start with a second down and 25 for the fourth quarter. So stay tuned for the exciting conclusion of the Blackwood Valley Wimber game. Second down and 25 here for Blackland Valley. They're trying to pass here. We have a big run here by number five. That is Blake Ray, the junior quarterback. And he's able to scramble to a manageable third down situation. It'll be about a third down and 11 here. 11.42 uh, remaining here in the game. Uh, you saw Blake Ray uh, found nothing downfield, able to use his feet, pick up about 14 yards, and uh, you'll give Blackfoot Valley a little bit better chance here to convert this big third down for them. We're looking to blitz. They just give it to Sheasley. Well, down by 14, there was 11 minutes left. Faced with a fourth and about three. Now, Jim, you really do have to, you know, consider going for it here. It looks yeah. like they are going to. Again, Sheasley is the punter, so they can do it. Richmond, 36, and Johnstown. Yeah, you could do a lot of different things here, uh, but you know what? If you don't punt, you give the ball to Richland here, and they're likely going to score. It's really a tough situation because you need you need to score, but you don't want them to score. It's just yeah, you're in a pickle almost. So fourth down and three, big play for Blackwood Valley if they want to win this game. He did not get it. He did not get the first down. Big stop by Wimber. And Sh Shane Almondover stops uh, the Blackwood Valley drive. And Sheasley had a head of steam, but he was not able to get to the first down. He was met with authority there at the line. And Wimber will take over the ball here with in Blackwood Valley territory. Jim, we were talking in the first half, Almondover is a de defensive tackle, and he's going out there and stopping Sheasley on a sweep. And Wimber will take over 10:29, and you can expect a whole heavy dose of running here. They just want to drain the clock, not give Blackwood Valley any sort of chance. And the clock is not running at all up here. Regal on the tackle. Ball picks up. Regal, second down, seven. So again, it'll bring up a second down and seven here from the 40-yard line of Blackwood Valley, actually just inside the 40-yard line. Uh, Wimber with the clock running here at 10-11, up 27-12. to 12, And they don't appear to be any sort of hurry here. They just want to keep running the ball, pounding away. Inside counter to Tomlinson. He has stopped. Fumble on the play. Blackwood Valley gets the ball. They got the break they absolutely needed. Yeah, that's a huge break down for Blackwood here. Over nine minutes left to play. You, really, you know, you really got to get a scoring touchdown out of this. Yeah, they can't really waste this opportunity again. Wimber was definitely looking to drain some clock and put punch in that score for the KO, but Blackwood Valley found some fight. Uh, got a fumble here. And the ball will be at their own 38, but a first down in 10, just inside 10 minutes, 9.58 remaining. Blackwood Valley still has life. Find out next week, Paul. 
nice gain on first down for Blackwood Valley, about four, maybe, eh, about four yards, we call it. That was Worthington on the carry, Maddie Worthington, 5'9", 143 pound senior wing back. And as the announced uh, public address announcer mentioned here, there's been a whole slew of Worthingtons that have played at Blackwood Valley. It's one of those names for that school out there. You know, he's a good player. Yeah, Worthington's the second leading rusher coming into this game. He had 184 yards coming in. She's at 530. Definitely a guy they're going to try to get the ball to. Uh, we have right here back to pass, going deep. He has a man. Uh, you almost look, if he extends his arm, he probably catches it. Uh, again, in the double coverage. Wimber defensive backs are looking into the backfield again. You know, why not keep going that if... if if Wimber is not uh, making the adjustments on the de uh, in the defensive backfield, why wouldn't you keep going to that? I'm not really Again, sure. Again, he still is thrown into double coverage. You only see one Blackwood Valley receiver out for a pass formation, so it's almost telegraphing the play. So, you know, I think if I'm Blackwood Valley, you know, running's what gets me. You, know, you don't want to drain the clock, but just run with a sense of urgency almost. We're going to have a timeout here. That's a timeout Blackwood Valley, and of course, you'd like to have a timeout in your pocket down late in the game if they score here, but it, obviously there was some miscommunication, timeout was needed. 27-12 score here, Wimmer is leading, 9-17 on the clock. And we like to remind you, if you're traveling, and you're traveling, I guess we can take this time to thank the, uh, the great Wimber hospitality up here. Uh, you know, they've given us all the room we needed up here in this press box. It's really been great. Uh, AD Ralph DeMarco and company have been, you know, just re really great and really, uh, really hospitable. I guess you could say you got some chips and drinks up here for free. Yeah, this is, like, you know, after being outside the past two weeks, it's nice to get back inside a press box and uh, a nice, spacious press box here at Wimber Stadium. Uh, you know, we've had all the room we needed, and uh, big thanks to their athletic department for letting us cover this game. You know, big thanks to you for watching this game here on the D6 Sports Network. And uh, we're back out on the ball. The timeout is over. Third down and seven is the situation. The score is 27-12, Wimber. 9-17 to go remaining in the game. Blackwood Valley needing a big first down here to keep their drive alive and have any hope of winning this game. A crucial play for both sides. 22 in motion. Looks like a screen. Nope. Going, going for it all again. And we're going to have an interception, and that Wimber gets the interception finally. We've seen them pick off two passes, both negated by penalties. This one finally intercepted. And Jimmy, you know who that was? That was 15 again there. Matt Barkley, his third interception. First one, like you said, that counted. Yeah, That's he, a great play in the air on the ball. I'm sorry, Jimmy. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Barkley's just playing great, actually, defensive back. Uh, you know, coming up with three interceptions, you know, from what we've seen. So he's a, he's a good player, and uh, we've seen him come up in the passing game. But again, nine minutes, nine seconds left. We're going to be expecting a heavy dose of running here from Wimber and uh, look to drain some clock and uh, you know kind of suck the life right out of Blackwood Valley's uh, hopes here. See some fans here leaving, folks, as well. Looks like they're in. Most of them were in the, the black and gray of Blackwood Valley. That was a run up the middle, and again, it's hard to follow this offense sometimes because you have guys going left, you have guys going right. You never know who's going to get the ball snapped to them. So, you know, it's again, it's a tough offense to defend, and it's a tough offense to call if you're an announcer. <laughs> I think we did a good job all right tonight. Folks, we've come a long way since our first game, Bellwood Tyrone. We were able to bring you that game live, and also our week two matchup, Forest Hills and uh, Bishop McCord. Uh, you know, really enjoy bringing these games to you guys. And again, 8.33 left to go in the game. Wimber running the ball. That is Blau, the carrier. He gets up for a first down. That'll stop the clock momentarily. Now the refs call it off. Eight twenty left in the game. 27-12 still is the score. Wimber in no hurry here. Blackwood Valley looking a little dejected on the sideline and on the field. Uh, body language is a big indicator in high school athletics, and uh, the confidence is not there for Blackwood. 
they were able, they squandered that opportunity to get that uh, fumble for a score. We have Blau again sweeping to the outside, and he is taken off here. And he gets down to about the 35, maybe inside the 35 yard line at Blackwood. Big run for Blau, and uh, he's really just dominated the second half. He is well over 100 yards, maybe even approaching 200 yards in this game. We makes the tackle. Actually, with a touchdown saving block. First and ten for Winter at the 33 yard line. From here to the you know what I mean? Hey, too many guys on the field. Before that carry, we had uh, Blau with 154 yards on the day. So again, that big drive in the third quarter where he had three carries for 60 some yards, you know, and he's been able to continue at for the rest of the game at uh, spearheading this November rushing attack. You know, Jim, let's look ahead here for uh, Wimber. You know, if all things keep going their way here with seven minutes left to keep the ball on the ground, they're going to run this clock out. But, you know, you have a, a big matchup next week with Ligonier Valley, an out-of-conference game. Yeah, it should no, be a really big game. Absolutely. Uh, that's maybe even a game we could consider coming back to just because of uh, you know, what, what the implications are for both teams. Uh, Wimber takes a shot downfield. Uh, you know, I expected them to keep the ball on the ground a little bit. We're inside seven minutes, 6.58. The clock has stopped. Uh, it brings up a third down and 12 here for Wimber. That was number 25, Nate McEvoy. It looked like he got a little pushing on there for Blacklick. No call there. And Jim, looking, looking ahead there then after Ligonier Valley, then they go to Connemont Township, and then they have a, a huge game at, or, uh, at, I'm sorry, Wimber Stadium on October 12th against Portage. Portage, another top gun in the, in the West Pack. And then two rather easy games at Ferndale and then Conway Valley, but then they have a huge showdown at the end of the year with Berlin. Yeah, definitely uh, some interesting games left, and like we said, they haven't been tested yet, so the tests are coming. This was the first one, and they're uh, responding very well. Barkley attending, was the intended receiver. Uh, the pass was a little off mark there, and it's a fourth down and 12, 6.53 to go remaining in the game, 27-12 score. And uh, let's see what... Coach Grohall goes with here, a uh, tough uh, situation to punt or kick. Uh, Blackford Valley maybe maybe found some life by uh, you know, stopping uh, Wimber on these two passes here. I'm not really sure why you try to go back down to that again, but it looks like they saw something up there, up here in the booth, so they went for it again. So Dakota Guy will call the play, the 6'1", 200-pound senior. Uh, playing like a senior tonight. Looks like they are in a punt formation, kind of. Might be a quick kick by the kick, uh, quarterback. Trying to get a hard count here. Ooh, snap over his head. Gets off the kick anyway. And a uh, pretty good kick considering the circumstances. Uh, mishandled snap. And then, folks, we're looking, looking ahead here for Blackland. You know, they really only have one game that is really going to challenge them. That's a home game against North Star on 10:26. But besides that, no, oh, I'm sorry, they have Portage as well at Portage on 10:05. But games like, as you see here, uh, at Conemaugh Valley, at Salzburg, Ferndale, definitely winnable games. A township, you know, they're having a down year, but I, I wouldn't count them out in any game just yet. Uh, until we get a better understanding of what they're all about. Uh, Blackwood Valley here, still in this game, 27-12, 6.48 remaining in the game. Double reversed here for Blacklick, uh, trying to get some yards up to the 30-yard line, maybe a three-yard carry, and the clock is rolling 6.39. I know time is running out on Blackwood Valley's hopes here today. So talking about District 6A playoffs, um, in the past we've had a lot of teams been in the, that have been able to make it to the playoffs, and there's been, you know, first or second place teams that have had buys, but this year it's a little bit different, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, it's just an eight-team playoff, much like uh, AA, only there's 24, 25 teams in the single-A race, so it's going to be a real battle to get into any spot and you know at this point you just want to get in and uh, of course Wimber there's District 5 they don't have to worry about something like that they're almost in already uh, Blackwood Valley they definitely need to and a win over Wimber would have been big because you get the power points it's a, a whole complicated system but uh, you know as you can see teams like Bishop McCourt Bishop Guilfoyle have the advantage playing the double-a teams getting the extra points so any wins uh, like a Blackwood Valley can get is uh, huge and especially a team of Wimber that will have some wins on their resume. It's really going to be an exciting playoffs. I mean, think about it, like you said, 
Guilfoyle McCourt. Then you have Penn's Manor, the, the, the defending District 6A champions. And then, obviously, the formidable Bellwood Annis. Yeah, and of course, uh, we've seen Porters uh, been able to beat some teams we didn't think they would beat. So, you know, there's a good field this year. And Ray is breaking a big run there. Out over the 45-yard line. That's the second time in this half he was able to come up with a big yard, big gainer. He's down on the field. Bringing up the first down for Blackberry Valley. So we're going to have a stop here. First and 10 after on 45. We have 524 remaining in the game, but uh, we have a man down here for Black Lake. Uh, looks to be in some some great pain. We can big 75 Ken Carney. I'm not sure about it though. We're not we're not sure. We're not going to give out a name unless we know. So again, Ray comes up with a big run there to get the first down down to the 45 yard line. Uh, they'll have a first and 10 from their own 45 with 524 left, and they are down 15 points. So a quick score would be really huge to their uh, chances. That was Carney there on that. Good to see him get off the field there. He has that knee brace on his left leg. Looks like he's favoring it a little. It's going to bring up a first and ten. Yeah, we have first down and ten. 5.24 left in the game. The clock will start to move on the whistle, and it is moving. Bel or Blackwood Valley down 15 points. Uh, the score really helped their chances, a quick score at that. Uh, we haven't seen Sheasley on this drive yet. Uh, hasn't really touched the ball too much, so I'm expecting him to see the ball rather soon. There he is. Yeah, he tried to make something out of nothing, and he was brought down for a gain of, or a loss of one, rather. And you, you see Sheasley, uh, he's obviously frustrated in a game like this, but still he has to get the yards where he can, and I know he's trying to cut and make that big play, but, you know, they still would like 40-yard gains, and he, he needs to understand that. Yeah, you're right, Jim. You know, I'm surprised we haven't seen him run straight at the line of scrimmage today. Uh, most every time he got the ball was, uh, you know, a lateral pitch or a handoff. And on cue, he Ray, the quarterback. Ray actually kept the ball. I thought uh, Sheasley was running with some head of steam, but he did not. And it's a third down and about 11 here for Blacklick. Uh, it's getting into desperate times here for the Vikings. Third down and eight at the 47-yard line of their own. It's four minutes on the clock. Uh, you know they need to score now if they want to have a chance of winning this game, making things interesting here for the last few minutes. They're going to go with the pass. Sheasley's throwing it. Hits this man on a slant. Picks up a first down inside the 30-yard line of Wimber, and they play just what they needed. We have a Wimber player down on the turf, and he looks to be in pain. His helmet is off, and he is grabbing something. At 75, Shane Almodovar again. Yeah, Shane's we've, had a great game today. Yeah, he's actually played very well. We've called his name a bunch of times. Yeah, like we also have a flag on the play, which might negate the big play. Black and Valley is black, backing up. Well, it's a big penalty there for Black, like almost a nail in the coffin there. Folks, we'll take a break here while uh, Shane Amendora gets up, and we'll be back here momentarily. Life, but uh, 3.46 remaining in the game. Third down and 25 for Blackluck Valley. Uh, you know, it's a do or die play here almost. They're at their own 32 yard line. Wimber never got a sub in there to take a timeout. Oh. 
You know, Jim, interesting to see, you know, looking down at Wimber's sideline, none of their coaches wear headsets. Actually, they were earlier. There was a few guys up here from the Wimber coaching staff. I, I think they moved down to the field. But uh, they took them off uh, to go down for the second half. Yeah, Coach Brady Hoke there, and uh, I'll put out another college football name, Brady Hoke from Michigan. Uh, he also doesn't wear a headset, and that's kind of odd in a Division One school like that. Yeah, but uh, that's uh, just a lot of faith in your coordinators and your assistant coaches that they can relay the messages to you, and uh, obviously that Hoke relies on that, and Michigan's you know, going through a nice renaissance uh, of their program after the Rich Rodriguez era. Oh, absolutely. So as you'll be watching this, you might already know, but uh, we've been checking the scores, and an uh, interesting score that Forrest Hills is down 14-0. Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, when you'll be watching this, you'll know the result, but just interesting to see uh, Guilfoyle might be a true player in that single-A playoff race, and uh, you know, could give uh, a lot of teams some trouble. Yeah, for sure. You know, taking out a, a Heights team, double-A Heights team, a big squad, real physical, and, and uh, equally as physical and a uh, you know, tough defense in Forrest Hills. But, uh, we have a third down here, 25. Sheasley passing, hook and ladder, fumble. Hook and ladder pass, fumble. There's been no indication by the referees, but. I think they're going to say that he really didn't catch it and possess it. He sort of caught it and then just kind of like tapped it. And the oh, I'm sorry, it looks like it's going to count as a reception. Yeah, confusing play, but it was uh, it was just a simple fumble. Uh, kind of overthought themselves there. Remember, we'll take over at their 40-yard line. 3.36 remaining. They're off 27-12. It seems like this game's almost a wrap. Wimber's just going to run out the clock here, try to maybe put in some of their JV guys, get some, some varsity experience playing in front of the Wimber Stadium crowd. And... Uh, We'll see what goes out. The starter Guyp is still in the game at quarterback, and you can tell Black Oak Valley is totally dejected. Uh, they did not. They did not play well. They did not have the showing they wanted to. Of course, they scored on some Wimber penalties. You can't. You, you know, you can't say they didn't score those touchdowns. But, uh, yeah. You know, they just didn't have the offensive output they wanted to have. You know, the defense kind of let them down as Wimber's offense control the line of scrimmage. Sorry, I'm rambling. <laughs> no, Jim, you're absolutely right, though. You know, like we said in the first half about, like, wearing down Black, like, Wimber was definitely able to do that. Just their plethora of backs and then their, you know, the staunch offensive line has really been able to help them. And defensive line also. It was really a great game by all of them. So, again, we have three minutes to go in the game. Uh, Wimber's just running the ball here. It's a second down and five. Uh, nothing too exotic here. No crazy plays. And it's nice to see Blackwood Valley coming in, jumping the hole, trying to make some plays. Uh, don't want to give up that extra touchdown. Jim, looking forward here again. You really hope that number 75, Shane Almodovar, is okay for Wimber. We saw him taking off the field there a few plays ago. He was such a key cog in this def defense today. It was really unbelievable. His ability to make plays downfield or laterally on the line of scrimmage Absolutely. was really for outstanding. For a big man, he was able to get down the field, uh, you know, make tackles out in the open field. Uh, you don't see that a lot from defensive linemen. So, you know, he's obviously a big part of Wimber's success. Third down and five from the 34-yard line here. Guy gets the call. They're going to throw it. That's complete to Barkley. The clock's going to stay rolling. Might be a first down here. Two fourteen on the clock. The Wimber on the season was coming in with three hundred and fifty passing yards. I'm sorry, that was Guype with three hundred and fifty, and then Tomlinson also had another sixty. We see some extra curricular activities after the play. Yeah, uh, penalties on both sides here, so they're likely going to negate each other. Uh, Wimber does pick up the first down, as would have happened. Uh, there's two minutes, 14 seconds left in the game here. Wimber is driving. Uh, look for them to run the ball here the first couple downs. Fans, we'd like to point you. To Fans, we'd like to point you to a, a feature on our website that we have. We have a bunch of old games called the Nostalgia Series, as far back as 1920. 
We have a great number uh, for you Rambler fans out there of uh, when we're back in the 40s and 50s when they were playing Johnstown and Altoona. Those are always a treat to kind of see how uh, Wimber Stadium has changed over the years and the point. It's sort of, you know, that rivalry is no more, but I'm sure many of you older, um, you old time uh, Rambler fans uh, would definitely enjoy a treat like that. Those are free on our website if you check those out. Two minutes, ten seconds to go in the game here. Wimber back to pass again. Surprised to see uh, Wimber trying to throw the ball when they could uh, kind of milk the clock here. But second down and ten, two of four left in the clock. 27 yard line of Blacklick. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Bush. Two oh four remaining. Uh, second down here. Not sure why Wimber is trying to throw it there. Uh, remaining here in the same uh, formation they've been running all night. Thirty four. That's Neri getting the ball here. He's going to cut it up. And he's going to score a touchdown for Wimber. That'll set Wimber at thirty three points. Blackland only has twelve. Uh, point after attempt coming. And. Uh, yeah, it's just a real combination that Wimber just dominated the second half. 20 unanswered points here, looking to make it 21. Yeah, really, you can't say anything else than that. Wimber really able to do whatever they wanted here in the second half. And, you know, it's good for a team like Wimber to, you know, face some adversity, how the second half, or the first half ended with uh, the weird penalty calls and, the, of course, the last second touchdown put up. So, you know, they were able to respond, uh, not let that play a factor into their game plan. They stuck it out and played their game. And uh, it obviously paid off. Well, Jim Snow, what do you think this huge matchup next week against Ligonier Valley? You have a, the, the rushing of Ryan Torrance of Ligonier, who's really just been unstoppable this year. Has about 10 touchdowns rushing, if we're not mistaken, before this week started. And, you know, he's really a premier player. He's, he's sort of like a Sheasley being that star of the team. But, you know, Ligonier is a big double-A school. Uh, you know, they can really bring it too. So next week's matchup is going to be definitely, uh, definitely be a, a great match. It'll definitely be a good game here at Wimber Stadium. Uh, we have yet to pick our game of the week next week. Uh, we'll try not to do Wimber two weeks in a row, but if it comes to it, uh, that's not a good one. That's not a, not a bad one to do. Uh, I see. How many is it? 109. 109. Folks, we're getting word here up in the booth that Sheasley from Blackleg at 109. Not sure yet on the stats there for Wimber as running back. Lyle had 158 yards for Wimber. Uh, you know, and of course, uh, uh, the Tomlinsons touched the ball. And, uh, of course, uh, Neri also touched the ball. So a bunch of different guys for Wimber touched the ball uh, running. And Guype, uh, Guype was able to make some plays out of the quarterback position. So Wimber is very... Uh, very deep, very talented. Uh, obviously, they had more playmakers than Blacklick. Uh, we, you know, Blacklick was just kind of relying on Sheasley to do a lot. Wimber was able to rely on a host of carriers. And uh, yeah, really, that comes down to the you know coaching and tradition at Wimber. Blacklick Valley making a nice little play here, running into his own guys. He breaks it. Don't know how he broke it. Sheasley's going, going, gone. You can't say enough about how good this kid really yeah. is. You're really, you're, folks, you're seeing here one of the best players in our area. It doesn't matter what conference, you know, what division, what, you know, what double-A, single-A, what are you. You know, he's one of the premier players. The shiftiness, vision, patience, it's all there. Speed. That's a 92-yard touchdown for Sheasley. Uh, don't go away just yet. It's 34-19. Still going to be really tough for Black Lake Valley to do anything. But nice to see Sheasley, uh, you know, let out some aggression, uh, some frustration, score a touchdown, make a big play. Uh, that's what he's capable of doing. So 34-18. 
Well, Jim, uh, you know, we have our feature on our weekly podcast about uh, uh, the, our high school Heisman hopefuls. And, you know, we've ranked a bunch that we've actually seen, but, you know, having seen Sheasley, do you think he belongs there? Absolutely. Uh, he's so instrumental to anything Black Rock Valley's going to do this year. Uh, he's the heart and soul of that team. Uh, we've seen a lot of guys like that in small small high school football. Berlin relies so much on Guelph uh, You know, a lot of teams do that, but Sheasley, you just, like I've said, the, the able to make guys miss in close quarters, uh, the balance, uh, the speed. You know, I'd love to see him run behind a big, you know, big double-A line, something like that in Laurel Highlands, because I think he would do very well. So we have a minute 40 remaining in our game, 34-18. We'll see if Black Hawk Valley maybe tries an onside kick to prolong this game here. Uh, Wimber is definitely anticipating that. A bunch of guys up near the line. So one of the most exciting plays in sports. Fielded easily. Recovering uh, the onside kick. Minute 38 remaining. Uh, we're going to look for... And Wimber just to run out the ball here. Uh, probably no pass attempts, but we'll see what happens. First and ten from the 46 of Wimber. And we have a QB kneel down. Good gesture by Coach Matt Gerhall of Wimber. And uh, that's going to drain the clock here. They're going to have to do it a few more times. Minute 30 a.m. counting. And uh, again, we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, no need to see uh, everything here. Uh, I'm Jim Hammond with my partner, Dan DeFrancis. Uh, we came to you uh, from Wimber Stadium. A great atmosphere, a great game. And again, we'll see you next week uh, at our next game of the week. Listen to our podcast, check our website. And uh, good night, everyone.